Hi guys, welcome to part two of our cruising tip series of the Caribbean. For those that haven't seen our cruising tips so far, where we covered the Med and the Atlantic Crossing, this is a series that we put together in the hope to give you the information we wish we had before we started cruising some of these areas. And just some really helpful tips on logistics, things like where to get food, where to get water, what are the best places, what kind of boat supplies you might need, how you could prepare your boat better for those places, and to maybe give you a little bit of a comparison between those different areas. Because we haven't cruised the entire Caribbean or the entire Mediterranean, these are snapshots. So if you haven't checked out the ones so far, check out our ones on the Mediterranean, check out our ones on the Atlantic crossing. We're gonna dive into the Caribbean, and after that, we're gonna cover like Panama, the Galapagos, the Pacific Crossing, uh, French Polynesia, uh, all the way back to Oz. So yeah, I really hope you find these videos interesting, informative. If you have any questions, comments, chuck them in the comment section below as we're going through the movie. Make sure you give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So guys, let's jump in. One of the best parts of the Caribbean was just the thousands of great anchorages. You know, in our previous episodes of the Med, we kind of explained how we did find it a little tough in the Mediterranean to anchor at times. And you're often forced into being into marinas to get close to the cities and whatnot. We definitely found the opposite in the Caribbean. It was definitely far more anchor friendly and there were so many great anchorages to be in. As I said before, you're generally in the lee of the islands, so it's really calm, often very little swell, and, and quite calm winds. Uh, there was mostly sandy bottoms, which was really good. Uh, for our Bruce type anchor, that was great, but I'd definitely recommend having a good anchor set up for sand, uh, because that was the majority of the anchorages we were in. There is generally a marina on each island, if not two. Uh, they're not always in the heart of the town, and often can be in like, isolated pockets, of the islands, but they do generally have dinghy docks um, and they've got generally your gas, your water, uh, and your fuel. So it's not that there aren't any services there, there are definitely marinas spread throughout the Caribbean, some better than others. You know, places like Antigua had really great marinas, um, which were definitely the hearts of the cities. Other places like St. Kitts and whatnot really didn't have a marina offering for the general yachty. But in our four months of cruising the Caribbean, we stayed a total of seven nights in marinas, which we thought was pretty good. We did find they were generally pretty reasonably priced, but as I said, we didn't find the value in them because there was always a good anchorage just around the corner, if not closer to the city. So unless we needed water, fuel, or picking up guests, we generally avoided the marinas. The other thing about the Caribbean was there was a lot of mooring balls in almost every country we went. In some places you had to take a mooring ball. You weren't actually able to anchor because you're in marine reserves or specific areas where there was no anchoring, you had to use them. You know, we were paying between $5 and $30 for moorings. Um, obviously when you're paying 30 bucks for a mooring, you're not staying there too long and you're trying to avoid it. But we did get stuck in St. Lucia on a $30 mooring for a night. But yeah, generally they were reasonably priced and in good locations. As I said, other places were marine reserves, such as Sabre, where anchoring was just prohibited non-stop and you had to take a mooring. These places was like a $5 fee for an entire week. And you could take the mooring for a week and it was five bucks. Most of those moorings were professionally maintained. They were always checked. They were in really good conditions. We did find a few crap moorings that had definitely deteriorated. So be sure to just check out the quality, ask around, ask the people who are serving you when the last time it was serviced, things like that, and definitely inspect it yourself. One place like the BVI's has just gone mooring crazy. There are, every bay is just packed with moorings, and, but most of these are targeted to the charter fleets. You know, most of the people there on their charter boats are there for a week or two. You know, it is so much easier to just pick up a mooring as opposed to trying to muck around with the anchor. We definitely found ourselves anchoring within those mooring fields or just to the side. There was always room to anchor. But then there was other locations which were marine reserve specific moorings, um, which were definitely some of the highlights of the BVIs. And you, you know, these were only day moorings and they were free. So be prepared for a few moorings um, and make sure you have your systems down packed for the moorings. 
uh, to make sure you don't chew through them and whatnot. But there's plenty of info online on how to take a mooring and the right setup for ropes and whatnot. Food was expensive and often a really narrow selection. It was something that really took us by surprise. Again, we didn't really have a preconception of what the Caribbean was gonna be like, but sourcing food really did take us by surprise. We definitely got a shock in St. Lucia, which was our first island, as just how expensive it was there. Basically, a lot of the food in the Caribbean is all imported. So your common things like canned goods and whatnot, which are normally pretty cheap in other countries, are actually really expensive because they're heavy and they're often flown in. So a lot of the products were either flown in from Europe or flown in through the US. So things were expensive. Don't get me wrong, each island definitely had its own local produce, which definitely differed from island to island, but the majority of food was imported and was expensive. Definitely made us wish that we had provisioned more in Spain. Uh, we cover this topic in our Mediterranean and our Atlantic cruising tip series movies. If you can, really think about provisioning hard when you're there in Europe. Think about the long-term dry goods and storage foods that you can keep for six months. Think about alcohol, think about tins, think about pastas, rices, all those dry goods. Try and provision when it's cheap. Our only saving grace in the Caribbean was Martinique. Being a French island, they did food well. They were really well stocked and way more affordable. Because Martinique was only our second island, we actually assumed that a lot of the islands would be similarly stocked. So we did not stock up and provision the way we should have. It's one mistake I don't want you guys to make. So the French islands in the Caribbean, do your whole provisioning for the Caribbean if you can, and then just stock up with fresh fruit and veg along the way of what you find. But all your dry goods, all your basic cooking essentials, beer, alcohol, stock up when you're there in the French islands, particularly Martinique. They had a dinghy dock at the supermarket. It was super easy, super accessible. So make sure you do that. Make sure you're thinking of several months of provisioning. The range of goods also really differed between islands. You know, St. Lucia had really great fruit and veg, but then somewhere like St. Kitts really had no fruit or veg available. It was often really poor stock and really hard to find. We found the BVIs to be far more US influenced as opposed to Euro influenced as the French islands. So we definitely started to find a lot more things in the BVIs that we'd been struggling to find throughout the Caribbean. Things like almond milk and coconut water and coconut oil. You know, for us living in Australia are simple things. We simply couldn't find them when we we're there in the Caribbean. Also for all those meat lovers out there, I really struggled to find good cuts of meat in a lot of these places. Again, the BVIs and Martinique were the best. I really struggled in places like St. Kitts. It was simply just like unidentified meat in quite random cuts. Um, and I personally didn't think they were great quality meats. It was also all generally imported and really expensive. And I really just stopped eating meat throughout the Caribbean because it was hard to find and it was really expensive. I did not find value for money. Luckily, we're doing a bit more fishing and we had a lot of fish in the fridge. But yeah, for all the meat lovers out there, definitely stock up when you find good affordable meat because you'll thank yourself later when you can't find it. We don't eat out often, but one thing we did really love in the Caribbean was the opportunity to eat out and try the food trucks and try the local foods. You know, you didn't have to get stuck in the restaurants all that often. It was often just like street food that was there and available and it was really good. So I really recommend getting out there. You know, there's a lot of fresh seafood and produce and then a lot of barbecues and things like that. So if you're into that kind of stuff, look forward to that in the Caribbean and try and source it out. Other places like St. Lucia had street parties where every man and his dog was there and there was all kinds of food available, everyone just cooking up on the side of the road, you know, it was a really great atmosphere and a really great way to just kind of immerse yourself in the culture and enjoy some foods that you might not have elsewhere. Thanks for watching part two of the Caribbean. Guys, if you've enjoyed these videos, please give us a thumbs up. Please leave a comment below for me and for the other cruisers out there if you have any other comments, 
questions, queries, or information that could help other people, make sure you drop it below. If you have not subscribed already, please subscribe now to allow notifications for more of these movies. And if you want to support the journey, consider becoming one of our patrons and supporting us through that. I really hope you're enjoying these and I hope you're looking forward to the next ones coming out soon. Until then, bye guys.